it, the customer requirements have been met and look at the tools and how they're creating reports as well. Really get a good feeling for the end-to-end -end process of doing a site survey. Nothing can replace the practical aspects because only when you're out in the industry do you really touch wireless, really get an intuitive understanding of what's happening over the air. Now, there are some sample questions on the Cisco Learning Network. I would recommend you take a look at them. In my personal opinion, they don't really prepare you for taking the uh, exam, but they do show you the kinds of questions that Cisco is asking. And, you know, before you do the site server, there's an expectation that you've already got some Cisco certification. So you should be familiar with the way Cisco like to position their questions, etc. So you're going to find the same style of questions in this exam that you'll be familiar with the earlier certifications that you've done. One of my recommendations for you as well is take a look at the Cisco Design Guidelines documents. Now, I haven't listed any here, and the reason is, is that they continue to update them and, uh, you know, they edit them, and it's really important to get the latest one and the latest techniques that they've got. But they've got ones that talk about deploying voice networks, mesh networks, location networks. And I personally find these incredibly valuable. And in fact, if I'm deploying Cisco equipment, I normally take those specifications with me. Um, I find them a useful reference document. So I really find it very useful for you not only to take the exam and the certification but in general for doing the job do look at those design documentations that they have up on the Cisco website. I think we all have individual ways that we like to prepare for an exam and these are some techniques and some guidelines here that that may help you. First of all when you feel that you're ready to take the exam, go ahead and register for it, and you do that at Pearson View on their website. And this is Cisco's partner that will actually administrate those tests. And they have various test houses that they work with, you know, worldwide. And you can go onto their site and find test houses that are in your area. And for this exam, because it's a fairly short exam time-wise, it normally doesn't take that long to actually register for it. But I would go in there, you know, one, two weeks beforehand, so give yourself plenty of time to prepare for it. But it's not that uncommon for you to be able to actually register and take it within the next 24 hours. But again, that varies depending on where you live, uh, in the world and what facilities are available and how busy they are. But because it's a shorter exam, it does tend to be easier to schedule than some of the other exams that I've seen at Cisco. While you're waiting to take the exam, study, study, study. Um, I always like to write study notes and record key data points. And so that's always a good technique. But don't stop studying. Continue to refresh and reread and look at the use these lessons as a good resource to review information. One of the techniques that is so important and not many people do it, unfortunately, is the night before you need to rest. Cramming into the early hours of the morning tends just to tire you out such that when you actually get into the exam, sometimes that information doesn't come to the forefront of your brain quick enough. And so it's really important to rest. A lot of people will say, okay, take a light meal before you take the exam. I like to have a nice big meal the night before the exam as well, and then just a light meal on the day that I'm taking the exam itself, just to give me a boost of energy. You should always arrive early. You know, you're never quite sure of what traffic's going to do to you. Not sure if there's going to be people in front of you when you get to the testing center. So always arrive a little bit early. Um, I always like to get there about 30 minutes early, sometimes a little bit before that. And I just sit in my car and just review my notes one more time before I go in. It is so important that you stay relaxed. I'm one of those people who get incredibly anxious before I take exams. 
And, uh, you know, it really doesn't serve anybody any good. You need to relax, you know, and try different relaxation techniques for yourself. What I always like to do is just some deep breathing. I find that brings me back under control, just calm myself down. And so whatever techniques work for you, but try those techniques before you go in. And actually, in fact, when I'm sitting there in front of the screen, before I have clicked the begin the test button, I will do the same thing. You know, deep breathing, relax myself before taking the exam. When you've arrived at the testing center, and again, you want to make sure you get there nice and early, but you'll need two forms of identification. I normally just take my driving license and my passport um, because they're two very recognized forms of identification. They will take your photo. So if you're like me, and maybe it's just a female attribute, but if you're like me, I always like to do my hair a little bit before I go in so that the photo looks quite reasonable. Of course, they're pretty yucky photos taken over with a webcam, but they will take your photo beforehand. So I'll just be prepared for that. Um, and also, the other thing you need to know is that you're not allowed to take anything into the exam rooms. You know, they don't let you take water or little snacks into the exam room. The thing is that you also can't take anything else. So I always take a spare pair of glasses with me <laughs> and I take uh, a cloth for cleaning my glasses. Um, and I have been able to, in previous tests, be able to take the cloth for taking my exam and I, I just lay it out flat. And they allow me to take that because I need that in order to have visibility to the screen. And so that's just a, a physical attribute that, that I personally need. But you're not allowed to take pens or paper or anything else. So take your cell phone off you, leave it in the car or, you know, things like a watch. I've even taken those off before I go into the a testing room. You're not allowed to take anything, anything in. The only thing I've ever taken in, like I said, is my glasses. The other thing is that sometimes people leave their stuff in the car. I'd recommend whatever you don't need, leave at home. Um, but it, you can leave stuff in the car. But what I always personally like to do is they have a lockbox actually on the facility. And I normally just drop myself my stuff in the lockbox and I've never had any issues with it so I just dropped my wallet and of course my driving license and passport that I bought in as IDs into the lockbox. I personally feel more comfortable than leaving it in the car but you on the other hand could also leave it in the car as well. Now a couple of techniques when you're actually taking the test. The first one is read each question carefully. And this is really hard to do if you're panicking. So <laughs> it's really important again to stay calm and to read the question. You know, it sounds a bit simplistic. Sometimes when I'm first starting out, I actually put my finger over the screen and actually read each word to myself. It just helps me calm myself, focus on the question, make sure that I'm really reading the question. Very important also to read all of the answers before you go ahead and select. On some of these exams, you know, they're looking for the best answer, not necessarily the first right answer. So there could be some subtleties there on the answers. So read each of the answers as well. And you typically have time to read the questions and all of the answers before you have to respond with your answer that you're going to select. What I always do and what is a very standard technique by people taking certification exams, not just Cisco, but any certification exam, is that when you look through the answers, there are some of them that you just say, well, I know that's wrong. So just eliminate them and then look at the ones that you think, well, you know, it could be one of those ones. Now, always answer the question. You do not get penalized if you answer a question incorrectly. So even if you're not too sure and you've eliminated the possible answers down to two or three, it is better to guess the answer than to not answer at all. Now, one of the things that I hate most about the Cisco certification exams 
and other companies don't do this, is that you can't go back to a question. So once you've answered it, you need to let it go. You need to say, okay, I've done with that question. I'm now focused on the next one. Stop worrying about it because you can't go back. So do the best you can and then move to the next question. Do not get hung up on one question. It is so easy to waste time on a single question. Remember that you can get a few wrong and even though they don't publish the score result, you can get a few wrong. So it's better to move on and to questions that you feel comfortable with and can answer than to get stuck on one and spend a lot of time struggling with something that you um, you know, may or may not get correct. And as part of that, just try and see if you can get your pace working. You know, pace yourself, answer a question, move on. And again, some of them are fairly simple, answer very quickly. Some of them require a bit more time, but just pace yourself. And there will be a clock displayed there so you can kind of pace yourself through those questions. And perhaps this is a slide for people just like me. Um, but I think it's very easy to go in there and panic. I always find that, you know, the, if I struggle with the first one or two questions, sometimes I lose it. And it's okay, you know, it's okay to get one or two questions wrong. The thing is here that you can always take it again. And this course, you can take it five days later. So yes, it's expensive if you fail, but just stay calm, recognize that there are value in taking the exam, answer each question the best you can. If you've really worked hard, you've studied hard, you've listened to these lessons, you've been out there, you've practiced it, you've been using the tools, you're in a good shape to pass this exam. At the end of the exam, it will give you your result telling you, hey, I've passed, or, well, these are the results and these are the areas that you need to go back in and study and improve. But you can do it and you will be able to do this if you've got good study techniques. And good luck on this one.